floor is where Brother Williams had us, and we'll be there in just a moment. If you're new around here, or, or perhaps uh, uh, just uh, maybe not understanding uh, really what he's saying there, Jesus died for me so I didn't have to. But wait a minute, Pastor John, don't you have funerals around here all the time? Don't you, don't you do that and you honor folks? you got a, a mausoleum over here and you got some grounds here, you bury people? Well, yes, we do. That's a physical death. But what he was saying about, Brother Dyson was saying about a spiritual death. That Jesus died so I didn't have to. Praise the Lord. Yes, we are physical here. The world often talks about the, the physical body and the soul. We know that we aren't just made of a body here. But the Lord talks about a third part. See, we're made in the image of God. And not only are we body and not only do we have a soul, but the Bible says we have a spirit. And when we're born in the flesh, that spirit is dead because of our sins. And when Jesus died on the cross, see, see uh, uh, when, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, he said, in the day that you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. He wasn't lying. Their spirit died. And because their spirit died, now there's something between them and God. There's sin. There's, there's, no, uh, there's no open access anymore. They had to go through some realms of, of some animal sacrifice and things until Jesus could come, die on the cross, and restore everything so that when we believe in faith, the Bible says, we can be saved, reconciled back to God. We, the Bible says, Brother John, Brother John likes preaching out of John chapter 3. He likes it. Being born again. Being born again. You know what that is? It's spiritually born again. Amen. New life in Christ. That's what he was singing about. And I like scripturally based songs. I know the world's all about this uh, 7-Eleven music, you know, seven words, 11 times and Jesus is cool, whatever. Listen, listen, we're going to sing the Bible. Okay. And we need to sing the truth of the Bible that hell is a real place and God loves you and he doesn't want you to go there. And you can be saved if you choose the Lord Jesus. He's the only way. He's the only way. Now, in 1 John chapter 4, this, this verse, uh, these verses that Brother Williams read to us, I believe uh, verse 7 through verse 10, is talking about God and how God is love. God is love. Think about that. God is love. What a great and tremendous truth. Now, it would, be, it would be watering it down. Help me here. It'd be watering it down if we just simply said God is loving. Well, God is loving. But there's a whole lot more to God than just the action of loving. God is love. It's not just a characteristic. It's not just an attribute. It is His very nature. God is love. And you know what? The, the truth is that, that preachers... Like you see up here on the platform, we're guilty sometimes of just preaching the stuff that we get all fired up about, you know, and, and how sin is real, and we get all, and, and we ought to preach those things, and, and how uh, and we need to get right, and we need to give up some things in life, and, and follow, and we get all, yes, that's all Bible, but so is God is love, and the world needs to hear it. The world needs to hear about how Jesus loves you, and He loves me, how He, he loves us because He is love. Love originates with our God. Isn't that wonderful? That's what this Bible text says right here, that their love originates with God. We know love because of Him. That's right. Think about what your flesh does. When you give in to your flesh, it's all about me. Oh, I am, I'm looking out for me and looking out for me. And we get really... The, the opposite of loving. We get selfish. We get self-centered. Love comes from God, and God teaches us to have love and to be loving. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord for it. Let's, let's look at the, uh, the text here. God loves us. Look, John chapter, 1 John chapter 4, this is the letter. 1 John was the epistle that was written by the apostle John. Epistle means letter. And so here in the fourth chapter... The whole chapter is good. We ought, to, we ought to focus on the whole thing, the context of the Scripture here. And in the beginning of the chapter, he starts talking and warning us about false prophets. 
wait a minute, you're going to preach the love out of this chapter, but he starts it with false prophets? Yes, because there's some identification going on. Follow me on the, if you would. Look at the verse 1. He says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. There is so much false being tr- preached and, and taught in the world today. And what John is saying, hey, I recognize it's happening, and I'm warning you to watch for it. I'm warning you to watch for it. And he goes on here. He says, verse 2, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the, fl- in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already it is in the world. Look at verse 4. Ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's talking to believers here, and he says, you have, because you've been saved, the Spirit of God inside of you, and you're of God. You're different than these false teachers. You're different than these false preachers. You, are, you have God inside of you. And because of that, he goes on to teach us some things. There's some identification that comes from that. Verse 5. They, speaking of the false prophets, are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Look at verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. There's a difference here between truth and error between those that come speaking truth and those that come speaking error. Yes? He said there's some identification. There's some identification. We start to recognize what is error versus what is truth. Did you know that Christians are to have a major identification about us that points us to be with Jesus? Did you know that? We have identification. Aren't you glad for identification? I sure am. I'm glad when I go into store and people got a, a uniform on and they have a little thing there that identifies them that they work at that store. That is so very helpful. Because I don't know about you, but I go in some stores and I get lost. They go in a store and they get, you know, I, I love it. They, I know there's a reason for it and corporately they think all these things and they have brainstorming sessions and think all this stuff up. But sometimes they, they get this bright idea that they're going to completely change the store upside down and backwards. And then you walk in and you say, I used to know where everything was and now I have no clue. I have no clue. So what do you got to do? You got to find the little guy with a shirt on and says, hi, uh, I work here, right? And you say, could you please help me? I am so lost and I need you to point the way. Yeah, amen? Aren't you glad for customer service? Yeah, where did that go? Amen. It used to be around. It used to be around, and then COVID hit, happened, and then nobody was in the store, and then all of a sudden they came back, and nobody knew what customer service was anymore. It's like it just it flew out the window. But praise the Lord for customer service. Anyways, that's not the message today. But I'm thankful for American customer service not like it used to be. Amen. But uh, aren't you glad for identification? Brother Jones, you've given identifications to the, ch- the school staff, haven't you? They've got these little tags, and you can tell they're a teacher. And they, uh, that tag gives them access into the, all the doors because we're locked during school time, rightfully so, for, for security purposes. And, and uh, they're able to get indoors, and they identify themselves by that tag. I like that. I like that. His wife, Mrs. Jones, is over all the nurseries. She's she's provided uh, aprons in the nurseries. And and sometimes I look in the nursery, I see a lady with an apron on. I know she's working the nursery today. It's identification. It's a good thing. It's a right thing. She says, says, I like these things. And I like that she likes them. And I think that's great. I like identification. But did you know Jesus gave us something very big and very bold and very, hey, everybody's going to know you. You're going to identify with me with this one thing. Do you know what that is? Love. Love. Oh, man, Pastor John's going kumbaya on us. Let's all hug. Listen, all the Bible is real. 
And all the Bible is true. And if we're going to preach some of it, we've got to preach all of it. Because the whole counsel of God, Paul said, is what I'm supposed to preach to you. Amen. And here in 1 John, he says, God is love. And that affects us. That ought to, ref- uh, ought to reflect in us. Praise the Lord for it. It's like a badge that you and I are supposed to wear all the time. Out and about everywhere. We're supposed to wear this big badge that says, I'm with Jesus. And it's love that we're handing out. You know what happens though? Hmm. You and I get in the flesh. What do we do? We just focus right in. We get right here, right here where my feet are touching the floor. It's about me. Get away from me. You've, you're, you're, you're messing with me, Brother Ed. Okay, you're rubbing me the wrong way. What's your problem today? You know what happens? We get self centered and love goes out the window. And we stop identifying ourselves as with Jesus. Why? Because we're walking in the flesh. The flesh and the spirit, they're warring against another. When the spirit of God is on the inside of us and we're yielding to him, and I'm way ahead of myself. This is in the note somewhere, but it'll get there, okay? But anyways, listen, when we yield to the spirit of God, we take on his characteristics and we become more like Jesus. You know what that is? That's love. That's love because Jesus, because God is love and Jesus is God. Praise God for that. Did you know when we take on that, that the Holy Spirit of God, the, the Bible says a tree is known by its what? By its fruit. You know it's an apple tree because well, the apples are growing on it. Right? Just like our identification, our love shows that we're with Jesus. Did you know when the Holy Spirit of God's inside of us? And we are not doing what we feel is right. Well, sometimes, you know, we get in, well, this is what I feel. This is what I think. You look at the book of Judges. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. It didn't end too well for him, did it? They were always in and out of trouble. Okay? But when the Holy Spirit of God gets in us, and we start to yield, and we start to give way to him, and what he, what he says is right, and he pokes us and says, hey, do this because this is right. Don't do that because that's not right. We start to take on his characteristics And the Bible says we start to produce fruit of the Spirit. Do you know what Galatians chapter 5 says the fruit of the Spirit is? The very first thing that's listed is love. Did you know that? It's love. Why? Because God is love. And when we're we're acting like our Savior, love starts to come out. Love starts to come out. Praise the Lord. John chapter 13, verse 35 says this. Listen carefully. By this... Shall all men know that ye are my disciples? By this, if ye have love one for another. Isn't that something? In the day and age where everybody's against everybody, and there's division everywhere across our country, and in politics, and in da- and this neighbors are fussing, and, and husbands and wives, and all, and churches are splitting because they can't get along. Jesus said, "You'll be identified." By your love, one for another. Are you with me? Then it should show on the outside. That's what he says. That's what he says. That's what the Bible says. Now, I'm going to preach through this text uh, for a few moments here today. And I'm going to give you two points here. And I know some of you like outlines. You're organized and, and uh, all that. And when I, when I help you and I give you one and two and uh, all that, I know that I'm not uh, great with all that. But sometimes it comes, all right? Uh, number one, receive love. Number two, watch this now. It's real simple. This is so simple. I'm a hillbilly simple preacher. You just have to take it, all right? Receive love. Number two, reflect love. Receive love. Reflect love. Look at the text here. And let's just preach down through it, all right? We were in verse 7, and uh, let's pick it back up. Look what the Bible says. Beloved Let us love one another, for love is of God. Love is of whom? It's of God. What's that mean? That means love originates with God. It doesn't originate with our flesh. We know that. All right? Verse, uh, we continue. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Verse 9. 
In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Love originates with, with God. You say, Pastor John, but I know people that are unsaved and they're kind and they're loving. Yeah, it's because they were brought up right. Our country had some Christian principles about it. We were founded on biblical principles and people were taught right. And it was, it was, it was good. It, why, did, why did our country even begin? Because people started coming across the sea seeking religious freedom. You know what? That's not being taught anymore today, but it's still truth. It's still history. Because you and I learned it when we were kids. That's right. And it, somehow history just magically changed. But our, but our country was established on Christian principles of people seeking religious freedom. Amen. And they started to teach their children. You know how they taught their children? From the Bible. Wasn't that awesome? And I've told you this before. You look at all the, you look at all the big uh, colleges today that are all big name. Harvard and, and Yale and all these. You know how they started? As Bible colleges. To train men for the ministry. That's what, that's, you look up their history. It'll say it. I've looked them up. It says it right on their website. Now, eventually, they'll change that, I'm sure, because that's the way of man. But we were a nation built on biblical principles. So love doesn't come from us. It comes from God. We learn that. We're taught that. All right? My children, they were selfish from day one, fussing over things. Oh, that's mine, and oh, I'm not sharing, and all this. And you say, well, I can't believe you, the pastor's children. Oh. Yeah. Try working with church folks. I'm having fun with you. But you know that's true. Because that's our flesh. That's our flesh. Right? Here's the gospel. The gospel's this. God loves you. And God intervened on your behalf. Because He loves you. Well, I don't understand. How could a God of love send, send somebody to hell? God doesn't send anybody to hell. The Bible says in John chapter 3, watch this now. John chapter 3, right after that 316, where the famous verse we all know, right? It says after that, it says, it said, Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world. It goes on to say that, that we are condemned already. Because we believe not in the name of Jesus Christ. We were condemned already. But Jesus came in so that we could have life and not, and not be condemned. He could save us. Why? Because he loves us. Even Ralph Malat back here in the back. I mean, that guy, look at that guy. If there's somebody needed saved, that's Ralph right No, We all needed saved. You with me? We all needed to be saved. And praise God. I'm, thanks, Ralph. Donna, I don't know how you do it. Praise God. We pray for you. We pray for you. All right. All right. Amen. But listen now. Listen. Jesus loves you. Yes. And we need to keep hearing that. And we need to keep telling people that. Amen. Jesus loves you. He loves you even when you're in your sin and defiant against him. He still loves you. Yeah. Kind of like you, moms and dads. Yeah. When you're a little precious angel. Gets defiant against you in your, in your way. You still love them. I mean, you want to kill them, but you love them. All right? <laughs> Praise God for it. Right? I'm not, I'm not going to disown my child. You don't find that in the Bible. I love on them. I pray for them. I correct them. And when they're adults, they're going to have to choose their own way. They're going to have to choose that. But I'm still going to love on them. And though sometimes I'm not going to understand every choice they make, I'm not going to understand everything they do, I'm still their daddy, and I'm still going to love them. Because my God does the same for me. Amen. I'm so glad that God didn't disown me when I was dumb. <laughs> I'm dumb every day. But still, I mean, there was some, there was some years of my life when I was just going my own direction. You, you understand what I'm saying? And I was going in the way of my flesh, and I was being a, a just... I was just flat out dumb knucklehead. That's what I was. And God had patience with me. And he said, I love you, boy. Come on back home. You know how I knew that? 
You know how I knew I could come back home? Because the love of God was reflected through Christians that instead of were calling me up and, and yelling at me and screaming at me how I wasn't doing right, I had, I had godly men in the church that I respected called me up and said, Johnny, I love you and I'm praying for you. I'd love for you to come back to church. You know what that was? That was welcoming. That was the love of God. You, you, so, so you've done some things you're not proud of. I love you. Would you come on? Hey, would you come back to church and then come over to my house for a meal? Yeah. That was called the love of Christ. And it was, go, it, was, it was being projected through people. Praise God for that. Reflected off of people. The love, of, it, love doesn't originate with us, but it surely comes from God and it can be reflected off of us. Love, listen here, love received and love reflected. That's what we need to hear today because we're not hearing it. And everything is, is, we're always in turmoil and we're always fussing, we're always fighting. Amen. Look at Brother Kidwell today. I mean, how it, phew, it takes a lot to love that guy. Man, talk about a knucklehead over here. Man, I need the Lord's help. Lord, help me right now. Praise God. Amen. I'm teasing a little bit, but listen, listen. Love comes from God, and if we are going to be identified with Jesus Christ, then we need to be loving. Now, I am way off my notes and all of that. Listen, let me, let, me just, let me just keep going through the passage here. Look at what verse 11, please, if you would. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. What did that just say? It said, God, we can't see God. The Bible says God is a spirit. Now, Jesus is the image of God, and He was brought into flesh and born in this world, and He was seen visibly. But God is a spirit. God the Father is a spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit. We cannot physically see God yet. Yet. We see God working in one another. And that love of God is perfected in you and in me when we allow the Lord to have His way. Think about last week. This crazy preacher stood up and said, Church, we ought to be involved in helping these folks down down in North Carolina. Do what, Pastor John? You want more money? Really? Really? No, we need to help people that are lost. Of, they lost everything. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be something? We lost everything. Some other people start coming and helping. Giving little things just so we could make it through a few weeks till we get our feet back on the ground. Amen. And our church was able to show the love of Christ to people that we've never even met. Some, again, I'll say this. Some sacrificed so that Life could continue for some of these folks. Sacrificial love. That's the love that Jesus taught us. He loved the church and gave himself for it. That's what a husband's supposed to do to a wife. That's the one time all the ladies start saying amen. I didn't even. Where's Marie at? Yeah, amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I go the other way too with that? Can I go the other way? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just, yeah, amen. But husbands ought to sacrifice themselves for their wives. Ephesians chapter 5, God said, a husband is to, show, is to love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That means I am to give myself physically, yes. Monetarily, yes. My time that is precious to me, I'm to give that to my wife. I'm to sacrifice that for my wife. I don't always like to do that. But you know who teaches me to do that? The Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ inside of me. Why? Because love comes from God. And I've got to learn that. I've got to learn that. You know why I'm preaching that? I had to learn that yesterday. I'm not going to start confessing all my sins. I'm not going to confess all Marie's sins. But you know what happens? You're married. Yeah, what, what are we at, 17 years or something like that, right? I think that's, is that right? I should know that. It was 17 years in July. I know what I'm talking about, praise the Lord, amen. Okay? I didn't even write it in my notes. All right. Listen, listen, but, but sometimes we get stuck on our way. Because as I'm supposed to love my wife and give all of myself for her, she's supposed to in return 
Watch now, big word coming, ladies. Let's see if you say amen on this one. Submission. And submit and give herself back to me. And then both of us, our, our needs are met and our wants are met and everything's met because I've given all of myself to her and she's given all of herself back to me. Amen. You know why we fuss and why we fight? Because pride gets involved. And because we stop doing it the Ephesians chapter 5 way. Yeah, that's right. When I'm, I'm the man, I set the direction. This is the way we're going. Watch out now, bulldozer. You're laughing because you know it's true. And ladies, the same thing happens to you. Wait a minute, I'm just as intelligent as you. Well, actually, I had better grades than you are. And yes, you're the man. And yes, all this. But my way is important too. Wait a minute. That's not the love of Christ. Amen. Are we having fun? All right. Are we having a good time in here? Let's understand truth. God said a husband is to love his wife. And the wife is then returned to love her husband in submission. Yes. So though his life is given completely to her and her life is given completely to him in everything. Yes. God's way is perfect, is it not? Amen. Marians aren't here today. I love the Marians. Perfect example of this. And watching them as a godly couple, him loving her and her loving him. She's taken care of him so many years, and he's taken care of her so many years, and they've celebrated some 60-some years now, praise the God, or 50s, I don't know, somewhere, it's up, it's up there. I praise the Lord for it. Amen. And I can talk about them, they're not here today. Pray for them, they're not well. But listen, great example. Hope Marie and I are like the Marians. Amen. Godly little couple coming into church, praise the Lord, every, every time the doors are open, is doing it God's way. And they enjoy life together. Amen and amen. Receive. Let's get back on track here. Listen, watch this. The the message is right here. Receive love. If If you haven't received the love of God that he died for you, that he loves you, that he wants to save you, he wants to keep you from facing hell that's eternal, the Bible talks about very clearly. And he says, he intervened, he, he, he came and died so that you didn't, have to, you didn't have to go to hell, but you could be saved from the wrath of God. Yeah, the New Testament talks about the Christian is able to escape the wrath of God. That wrath comes because God is just, he's perfect and just, and he's holy, and sin has consequences. But he came and said, I want you to be saved because I love you. Have you received the love of God? Have you received it? And secondly, are you reflecting it? Let me use a few illustrations. You know what what God wants you to be? He wants you to be the moon. The moon does not originate light. It's not in its nature. It's a, listen, it's, it's a cold, dead rock. With a little bit of dust. That's what it is. And yet God hath put it in its place, the orbit around the earth, watch this now, listen, so that it can soak in and receive the light from the sun and therefore becomes a reflection for all to see. You know how we know the the moon exists? Because the sun lit it up for us. And we can identify it as a light in the night sky because it received the light from the sun and then reflected it. Amen. God wants you and me to be moons. That's what he wants. The love of Jesus Christ being received and then reflected. But you know what? We're, well, a bunch of us, we're all, we're all like comets. <laughs> Many times we are. We just go on our own way and, and barreling through the solar system and, and, and instead, of, uh, inst- and, instead of reflecting that sun. And we reflect a little bit, yeah, because it... it we, we like to pat ourselves on the back. But we're made of a bunch of ice and dust, and we get close to the sun, and we get all flustered and fired up, and we turn to, we turn to gases. And you know what? You know how you identify a comet? By its tail. By all the, all the uh, damage and all the leftovers that are from barreling through everything and all the mix. You identify it by its tail. That's what you and I are oftentimes in our flesh is a bunch of comets. God said, stop it. Be the moon. Be right where God puts you and reflect the love of God and I'd be identified, be identified with me. Praise the Lord for that. Can I, church today, can I say thank you to Sunday school teachers? 
for being the moon today. Can I thank you for that? You took time out of your week to study the Word of God and get ready and teach some children about, about the Lord Jesus Christ. How about some moms and dads this week that, that spent so much time of course, to provide for their children, but then working on things with them, educating them, and then taking them into the Bible and praying with them and, and teaching them the things of the Lord this week. You've been, you're being the moon. Amen. Thank you for that. For that one in the family that's saved or, 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 or is trying to help and trying to lead, sometimes it's the wife and sometimes it's the husband when the other one hasn't gotten on board yet or, or is not uh, spiritually where they ought to be. And you're trying to be the moon for your house. Thank you. I believe God is glorified in that. I remember the church where I got saved and I watched a man come to church faithfully week after week after week for decades, for well, decades, I wasn't that old, but uh, for uh, most of my life that I remember. And he came by himself. And his wife's name was on the prayer list to get saved for week after week after week after week. And we would all pray for her. And we knew what her name was because we were praying for her. And then I remember the day she got saved and she came to church and she was baptized and joined the church. And then she was faithful with him all, all for the rest since, 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 I'm, since, that, since that time. Why? Because he was like the moon just reflecting the love of Christ back on his wife. He didn't demand things. He didn't bulldoze over her. But he loved her. He prayed for her. And he witnessed her. And he asked her to come to church. And eventually she got saved. Amen for that. Amen for that. Praise God for it. Hallelujah. Bible teaches us that we ought to deny ourselves. You know when it says that we ought to take up the cross and follow Him? Yes. You know what a cross is? It's death. We nail our old flesh, our old wants, our own wishes, and our own way to the cross. And we deny ourselves. We mortify the flesh so that we can live for Christ. So we can do it His way. That's what it's talking about. He tried to teach that to His disciples and Peter, he didn't really get it at first. He said, I go a fishing. Remember that? He just got tired in the way a little bit. I go a fishing. And Jesus come back to him, making breakfast on the shore, and called him over and said, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. Right? You haven't mortified the flesh yet. You went back to your old way. You went back to the world and did it, doing it the world's way and the way you were making it before me. He says, but you're different now. You're, you're a child of God now. You're a preacher of righteousness now. What, you know what he's saying? If you love me, feed my sheep. That's what I've called you to do. God was doing that to me for a while. I was over here running in the world, trying to make money, trying to make a name for myself, trying to build something. And he's saying, I've called you to a different purpose. I've called you to do something for me. And it took a while, but finally God, in his patience and in his grace, allowed me to see the truth. And I surrendered to Him. Amen and amen. What does godly love look like? Would you go over to where we started, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That's where we started the whole day. What does godly love look like? 1 Corinthians 13. That's why we have this chapter. That's why, that's why God gave it to us. Did you know that love... I'm going to use a Bible word. Ready for it? Love begets love. Begets love. What's that mean? That means reproducing. Uh, if you look at the lineage, the, uh, the, uh, the, the lineage of Christ in Matthew chapter 1, if you look at some other ones, there's uh, Luke chapter 3 has, uh, has the lineage of Christ on Mary's side and all of that. If you look at these, if you look at these, uh, uh, these lists here, oftentimes we say this guy begat that guy. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat all his boys and all that, right? Beget, love begets love. But hate begets hate. Did you know that? It's easy for me. You know, I, I hear, because I'm your pastor and because I'm in front of some folks, I hear when people like things and when they don't like things. I hear it. Okay? Just talking to somebody about that yesterday. But um, when you hear somebody talking about you and they're, and they're, always, they're talking very positively, 
man, this guy loves you. He was talking you up a storm. He was telling about all these things and how you're, how this and how that. You know, that makes my flesh feel good. It makes your flesh feel good, don't it? Well, yeah, yeah, well, he's got, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and you know what? It's easy to like people like that. You know why? They're loving you and you begin to love them in return because they're talking good about you. So I have this guy. Let me have let me bring him on the platform. Let me let you all hear about it. You know what I'm saying? I like this guy. Amen. Get that guy. You know, let's take that guy out to dinner or something. Woo, he's doing a good job. But you know what? When we find out somebody's talking ill about you. Even if we even if it's right or if it's wrong, but we if somebody's talking ill about you, you don't like it too much. You start to grumble about it. Well, I don't understand that. And you go back home and it's just going around and around and around and around in your head. And you know what happens? You begin to feel the same way towards that person. Because love begets love and hate begets hate. That's right. That's right. Amen. Look at godly love here, 1 Corinthians 13. Of course, the beginning of the chapter says if we don't have love, we're nothing. Right? We can do all these things to serve God, and we serve God without love. We're nothing. But look in verse 4 again. I had you read this with me earlier. Look at what godly love is. Verse 4. Charity, that's the word for love, old English word, but it means love. Sacrificial love here. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Brother Trumpy back here, great guy. I like this guy. He's awesome. How do you not love Brother Trumpy? Right? But, let me tell you, Brother Jamie over there, I mean, that guy, let me tell you about him. Right? I'm picking because there's two guys sitting in the back. One's Brother Trumpy and one's Brother Jamie. But anyways, okay? I I don't know about that guy. You know what? He just, you know what he said the other day? I can't even believe it. Wait a minute. Charity suffereth long. You wouldn't believe this. You wouldn't believe this. But there's people in this church that have hurt my feelings. You know what my Bible says? That godly love suffereth long. I don't get bent out of shape and steam and stomp my feet and run out the door. No. I say, Lord, help me to respond correctly. Help me to suffer long. You know, Jesus Christ, he stood before Herod, he stood before Pilate, he stood before the Sanhedrin, and he was spit on, and he was, he was beaten, and he was, uh, uh, had that crown of thorns uh, driven down into his scalp, all of that, right? Yes? And he still died for him. He suffered long. Look what else it says, and is kind. Why can't we be kind? Church family, why can't we be kind? Honestly. Why, why is it that we, we always got to just bark at people? And we're always just upset with people. And there was always this, there's always that problem, and you did this wrong. And that. Why can't we just be kind? Isn't that godly love, to be kind? Yeah, there's a man, and uh, now his name is escaping me, but Paul wrote about him. And the whole reason he wrote about him is because he showed his kindness towards him. There's something to say about being kind. Look what he says, charity envieth not. We're not jealous of one another. We're not comparing ourselves and being jealous. Charity vaunteth not itself. <laughs> Look at me. You know what happened to me this week? Let me tell you about it. <laughs> right? Vaunting and lifting ourselves up. Not puffed up. See that? Verse 4. Look at 5. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Hmm. Appropriateness. Wow. Maybe we need to park on that for a while. Appropriateness. Yeah. There's a way in which we should act and so we should carry ourselves. Yeah, appropriateness. You know, it's appropriate. It's appropriate to dress certain ways for certain occasions, isn't it? Yes, seemly. Okay, love doesn't think it's, uh, excuse me here, it's behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. There's a big one right there. You know what we are the king and queens of? Assumptions. Are we not? Well, Brother Jim, he didn't shake my hand this week. He's got something up his... He's got a burr in his saddle. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. And he he was looking at me kind of weird on the third stanza on the second line. 
You're laughing. I've seen it. That must be a big bird, Brother Jim, and you need to get right. What? Where did that come from? Maybe, maybe he had a sniffle and he didn't want to wipe snot on me, okay? <laughs> Amen? I appreciate that, Brother Jim. But you know what our mind does? We, as- we think evil. We assume evil, don't we not? But godly love doesn't think that way. You know what? Perhaps Brother Jim's just having a difficult day. And you know what? I should call him and check on him. That's supposed to be godly love right there, is it not? Yeah, come on now. Instead of getting bent out of shape every time somebody says something or doesn't do that. You know that, that, that song we was referenced with Brother Kroll, we were talking about it today. Excuses, excuses, you hear them every day. The devil will supply them if the church will stay away. And one of them, the old, the, there's a lady in the, in the middle of the song goes, and the preacher didn't shake my hand. <laughs> right? You with me? Yeah. What do we do? We, we assume things. Look what else it says here. Verse 6. It rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. You know what's tough sometimes? Is when people do us wrong, harm us, and and we know that there's some sin going on too. You know what? Sometimes we rejoice in the fact when they, when they, something happens to them. When judgment comes their way. When punishment comes. Yeah. And we say, look, they got what was coming to them. Wait a minute. That's not godly love. No, restoration. Come back before you ruin your family. You with me on this thing? Watch. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Amen. Doesn't throw in the towel. Even when it's tough. Even when that prodigal child over and over and over again does the thing you're trying to help them not to do. Charity never faileth. I know there's things going around about just disowning and all that stuff. Where do you find that in the Bible? I don't. Charity never faileth. You love on people. And if your child goes their own way and tries to make a statement and does all this kind with big spiked purple and pink hair and and, and earrings all through everything and, and making statements and tattoos, everything. I mean everything. Bring them to church and let's love on them. Let's love on them. And let's reflect the love of Jesus Christ back to them. Because that's what they need. And that's what you and I need. Instead of whispering under our breath about everybody and why they're a little different. Let's love on them. Hey, thanks for coming to church today. Man, can I share with you that Jesus loves you and he died for you? Are you going to heaven? Because I'm gonna, we're going to be there. But are you going to be there? Let me show you the love of God. And let's love on people. Amen. We're too busy trying to be a judge. You know what we do? I'm, I'm closing my Bible here and I'm, I'm about done here. You know, what, you know what we're real good at? We get, somebody all bent out. We, we get somebody that's off a little bit doctrinally and we get the sword of the Lord out. That's the Bible, right? And we about take their head off. But when somebody else is, when, when they're not right on this love thing, we don't think about it. We don't care. I, I have seen churches that they're like, they're like a bunch of... Uh, uh, Junkyard dogs. I mean, they're nasty. Yeah. Ah, bless God, they ain't afraid of preaching hard and all this and on. Yeah, yeah, but how's their love doing? The identification with Jesus Christ. How's that doing? You with me, church? Let's show some love. Love should be reflected back to our Savior, yes. And obedience. If you love me, keep my commandments. Love should also be reflected among other Christians. Yes. And it should also be reflected on people that aren't Christian. Why? Because the Bible says Jesus came seek to seek and save those who are lost. And he came to that, he came to that uh, maniac of Gadara and said, I love you. He came to that woman at the at the well, though she was in sin, he said, I love you. You need living water. Can I give it to you? Mary Magdalene, others, all these, all these people that needed love. Let's bow together, please. Lord, I thank you so very much for what you've preached today and the message of the hour. Lord, we need to hear it. God, the world needs to hear it. 
We need to hear the love of God and we need to reflect it. We need to receive it and we need to reflect it. Lord, I, I wonder today as we, as we come to invitation time, as we invite folks uh, to come to the Lord, as we, Lord, understand that we need to come to you sometimes to get right and sometimes to renew some things. God, I pray today, please, if there's somebody here today that's not received the love of God, They've never received Jesus Christ as their Savior. They've not asked you to save them. They've, they've said, well, I, I've always known there's a God. But the Lord, the, the Bible so clearly teaches us that's not enough. We must receive you. We must receive you. Lord, I pray that somebody here that's not received you, they, they don't know the love of Christ. Maybe they've never received it. They've never soaked that in. Uh, They've never uh, been born again. I pray that they'd come and say, what must I do to be saved? What's this born again thing that you're talking about? How can I do it? And Lord, I pray they'd come and they'd uh, seek out one of these men up here, one of these ladies with a Bible right up front here and say, what must I do to be saved? I pray for all others of us, Lord, that we are saved, but we're not reflecting back the love of Christ the way we ought to. Would you convict us? Would you show us? Would you teach us to do that which pleases you and identify with you? Help us now, please. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Would you stand together? Uh,